Hey, hello, and welcome to the show. It's me, JP, and this is JP's product pick of the week. So before I get started, what I want to do is send you to the page where you can pick up this product this week. That's the URL for it right there. That's the QR code if you want to point your camera out there and land on the page. And what you're going to see, I know this gives it away a little bit or a lot, but what you're going to see if you head to that product page is the product pick of the week and it is on discount just during the live stream only. So if you head over there, you can pick up one, two, three, five, ten of these at a super 50% off discount price. But I think I've said too much already. So let's back it up a moment and uh, ask Lady Ada to tell us all about this product pick. Take it away, Lady Ada. This breakout lets you plug in a Cherry MX compatible switch like you see here. This is a, a KL box switch, which is Cherry MX compatible. You plug it in to um, the breakout board and there's on the bottom, you can see on this photo, there's a socket. And so the switch doesn't get soldered in. It actually kind of press fit plugs in. Um, there was also on the bottom, you see that white square thing that's a NeoPixel, and there's also a diode. And the diode is what lets you create uh, key matrices with this thing. And the NeoPixel, um, you see here, there's this kind of like, you know, there's the, the two sockets on the left, the center is the, the mounting post. And on the right, there's actually a little slot in the keys. And the key um, itself is meant for like having an LED soldered in perhaps. But you can also just have a reverse mount NeoPixel shine through, um, and then you can kind of backlit the LED with RGB colors. So you've got a Cutie Pie board, uh, you know, it's just using Arduino, or you can use CircuitPython, whatever. And um, these are the keys, and I'm just going to remove them to show you that um, the key itself plugs into the socket. So this is the key, and it's got these two um, connectors, and that those when this key is pressed, those connect together. And then there's the mounting post, right, to keep it mechanically stable. So you can plug it in and then, you know, it, it's pretty stable. I would say, look, you want to have it glued or taped or something to, to keep it from coming apart because you can pull it off. Um, and here's another one. So you have two of them connected together. And then on each side, you have multiple pinouts. Um, there's power and ground here. These are for the NeoPixel. And then this white wire you see, you know, goes in here and then chains over to this one. That's the NeoPixel data line. So just like NeoPixels, you chain them together. This has NeoPixel data going through. And then um, you have two pins for the switch, the top and the bottom, the end and the cathode of the switch. Again, there's a, this diode in the middle so you can make key matrices. If you're not doing key matrices, you can just ignore that diode there to, to avoid key ghosting if you're making a complicated matrix. But um, basically you have one pin for every switch. And then uh, for this demo, when you press the key, the LED turns off. So, you know, you can just use it as a switch and then control the NeoPixel separately. So there, you know, the NeoPixel is not connected to the switch at all. They're totally separate. You can have the NeoPixel on all the time, off all the time. You don't even have to power it if you don't want to. It's just kind of a bonus extra. It shines underneath. Here's a demo of the opposite. When you press the button, the new pixel shines through. Um, so it's basically a breadboard friendly way of connecting a mechanical key that is Cherry MX compatible to your breadboard. All right, I'm convinced. In fact, I'm gonna run over to my mystery cabinet of wonders and grab one so that we can have a look at it and do a little bit of a demo. I'll be right back. Yes, there it is. My product pick of the week this week is the NeoKey Socket Breakout for Mechanical Key Switches. It has a NeoPixel built into it so that it can underlight your keys. It has sockets so that you can push your mechanical key switch into it without soldering, and then you can try different uh, switches out whenever you want. And it also has a diode built onto there to do diode matrices. And it has pins for soldering in headers so that you can plug it into a breadboard for prototyping. 
It is perfect for prototyping key switch arrangements. In fact, let's have a look at the key switch and breakout itself, and then a little bit of a demo that I've put together on a big old breadboard. A little camera view here of it, so you can see there is the little set of sockets. That's actually what one looks like bare on its own. There's the kind of key, Cherry MX compatible key that'll plug into there. You can see our little NeoPixel pointing up and underneath, and there's little sockets. These are the pins for breakout to plug into your breadboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and fit this into here. You just wanna align those little legs. They're a bit delicate, so you wanna make sure those are aligned, and then gently press in, and it's stuck in there, mechanically and electrically. Of course, this can come back out if you wanna try a different key. And uh, now you'll usually place a little key cap on top of there, and it's nice to use ones that are made for lighted key switches. So this one is just perfectly translucent. You can also get ones with little window cutouts, uh, sort of like this type here. They have a little uh, light pipe kind of window. Uh, let's take a look at this board. So this is a big old breadboard. And let me pull my camera out and focus that so you can see layout on there, that'll work. And I'm just gonna refocus that a little bit. Looks good. So what you can see on this one is I have an Itsy Bitsy M4 plugged in. This will work with nearly any microcontroller because all we need are digital pins to read the switches and some NeoPixel compatible pins. Uh, and I'm running CircuitPython on here. You can see the arrangement of wires is essentially this blue line is the NeoPixel uh, connection. So that runs in and then out, in, out, in, out, in. And I also have a blank spot here that we're gonna plug a switch into. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and do that now. So you can imagine we're doing some sort of like an ergonomic layout. And so I've got a switch here. I'm just gonna align that left, top left there uh, with power. So that's, uh, in fact, it's, it's duplicated on top and bottom some of these um, so that you can have more flexibility in your arrangement on a breadboard or a perma proto board. How I'm using it is power and ground for the NeoPixel are here. The input for NeoPixel is this blue one at the bottom. Uh, and then I'm using a ground for the cathode side of the switch. And the anode side of the switch is this gray wire running into one of my digital inputs on the Itsy Bitsy. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. And what you see is I have the uh, animation, LED animation library running on here. So we get some cool effects. Right now I'm doing a kind of pulsing pink. Something else that's interesting is that I have these set up as uh, USB HID keys. So these are sending shortcuts to my broadcast software, which means if I press one, we get this current camera view of me in the corner. Two, it switches to a duplicate. Three is that uh, little product uh, web page. Four goes to a little product photo. And five clears that layer out entirely. So the way that's working is just simply sending the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. And then I've assigned those as shortcuts inside of Wirecast here. Uh, and you'll also notice as I do that, I'm switching the animation. So here we have this nice little chase animation. We have a blinking amber have pulsing between three colors, color change, and this is a sparkle pulse, which is kind of nice. Uh, so we'll bring me back there. Now, if you want to see how this is coded, I'll jump into my circuit Python view here, and I'll just bring up a smaller camera. So what's happening in the code? I'm importing time so that I can do any timing based things that I need to pause or something like that. Importing board, so I get the definition of the pins. Importing NeoPixel, so we can drive those NeoPixels. Using digital I.O., uh, digital in and the pull, uh, it's a pull down resistor that I'm using. Then I have the debouncer that allows me to do things on uh, key presses and key releases. Then importing USB HID and the keyboard and key code libraries, so that way I can uh, press HID keys. Then I have a bunch of different uh, LED animation library imports here. Uh, and then here's what happens for the setup. I'm setting up the, essentially the key pins are separate from the NeoPixel pins. So even though you have 
sort of both of those things built onto here. They're essentially separate circuits, and you can use one without using the other. So I import the key pins, and I have those on board D12, 11, 10, 9, and 7. And then I'm creating the debouncer on each of those pins. And then I'm setting up the NeoPixels on uh, A5. That's the pin that's running out and into the first uh, of these switches, and then they sort of daisy chain along. And I'm setting it to have uh, five NeoPixels in the strip. Set up the NeoPixel strip, and then I'm setting up these different animations. I'm setting up an animation sequence, and that's actually what I'm cycling between. When I hit, hit each key, I'm going to a particular uh, sequence, pulse, chase, blink, color cycle, and sparkle pulse. And then I'm setting up the keyboard device. Now, when we're actually running in the main loop of the program, here's what's happening. The animations animate just says, keep looping whatever animation is current from those sequences. And then we check all of the five key switches. So for I in the range, however many key switches we have there, in this case five, we will update. That's the debouncer checking to see if anything has changed. If something is changed, like we've pressed a button, that's the fel uh, condition, then I'm printing to the serial port which one I pressed, and then I'm also keyboard send the uh, appropriate key code that I have in this little list that I built here. And then we animate, uh, we set to the current active animation. So what I'll do is I'll open up my uh, serial view here. And now when I press the keys, we should see zero being pressed and released, one, two, three, and four. And you'll notice my little animation cycles are changing. It's not changing my camera views right now because that's based on focus. So I'm pressing a one, two, three, four, and five. In fact, we can watch them get typed in here uh, as I press them. But since I don't have my broadcast software highlighted right now or active, it's not changing the camera views like it did before. Uh, and that is it. That's what happens in the code. Uh, it's very simple. We have the web page set up here, like I mentioned before. If you want to go and find out more, if you want to go and order some, head on over. That's the product ID 4978. Uh, and that's about going to do it. So let's jump back into this view here. Uh, and let me pull one of these apart. That is my product pick of the week. It is the NeoKey Socket Mechanical Key Switch Breakout. And I'll go ahead and place that on my wall of Stemma QT goodies and others. And that's going to do it for another JP's product pick of the week. I'll see you next time.